Gauteng Premier Banyaz Ali Sufi is currently briefing the media following that uh, explosion at the Johannesburg CBD. Let's listen in. Members of the media, greetings to you. Firstly, let me apologize for the delay. I know that in the morning we have committed to can meet with you at 1 o'clock. But due to unforeseen reasons or circumstances, and whereby our premier was held up and he could not escape from that engagement. But we are happy that our premier has joined us now. And we are going to continue to provide an update and as to what is that which we have from what we have briefed you about in the morning. So without waste any time further, let me just head over to our Premier to can continue with this briefing. Premier? <clears throat> uh, thank you so much, uh, PC. Uh, let me add my voice in the welcoming uh, the MMCs uh, that, uh, that is here, the MEC and councillors that are here, including the leadership of the police. Uh, I also want to apologize because we gave the go ahead to uh, the team to go to brief you, but uh, it's quite clear that we needed to conclude the task that was assigned to us so that we can come back. Uh, and give you this briefing. So our apologies uh, for keeping you waiting. We want to remove uh, one fear immediately uh, so that we can remove it from the discussions and the debate. Uh, around two o'clock we got another call that there was a, an explosion in Bram Fisher uh, where one person died and another person got injured. Upon deep investigations by the police, uh, we established that it was a private house uh, and the explosion emanated from a, a heater. Uh, I'm not sure it's a gas heater. I just want to say heater because the element of gas is a... Uh, so, so we just want to remove it so that uh, it must not cloud uh, the discussions here. Uh, we've already sent our condolences to the family and we've asked our team uh, to check the state of the person that was injured and we wish that person a speedy recovery. Colleagues, as promised this morning, uh, we want to update you on all areas that we committed to come back to you to update you. Uh, the number of fatalities still remain uh, at one. It's only one person. Uh, we've taken the fingerprints of uh, the said individual. Uh, they're being assessed and analyzed uh, uh, and the family members will then be notified. So we've got uh, the fingerprints and are using our electronic system uh, to track the family of the deceased. Uh, thus far, unless otherwise, uh, we have not received anyone reporting somebody missing. Sorry, I had opportunity to visit the hospital uh, today and I met four uh, of those that are still in hospital at uh, Charlotte Matlaige. Uh, there were two that were in critical conditions. Uh, and our report still confirms that those two are still in a critical condition. Uh, since our engagement uh, this morning, uh, you will recall uh, during our engagement we indicated that we've got 12 that we're still in hospital. Uh, the number is down to eight, uh, uh, those that are still uh, in hospital. Uh, and the figure is still 48, as reported, uh, the overall uh, people that were injured. And the hospitals are still the same. Hillbro, Southland, Garden City, Malbatin, and Charlotte Matraita. So we, we, we want to, to leave it there. 
The second area where we committed to assist you uh, was to get the criminal report on what caused the explosion. You will recall this morning we indicated that every institution that had anything to do with our, with our underground network were pulled to come and check their systems. We brought a goalie guest and they indicated that uh, from their side uh, their systems are still intact. Uh, we brought the sewer team uh, we brought uh, water, we brought telecom, we brought social, and as well as uh, the electricity team. So thus far, they are still insisting uh, that their systems are still intact. Uh, what has happened there does not come from their system. So subsequent to that, uh, we then brought the Department of Labor because it has experts that deal with this kind of things. Uh, uh, they were led initially by Mr. Okay, we got a briefing now from Mr. Lisibe Rapela. Uh, Mr. Lisibe Rapela, and this is criminal good people. The Department of Labor indicates that the nature of gas when it explodes and what has happened here it's similar to what has happened at Yeovil what is known as Telcom Towers uh, they claim that there are similarities and on the basis of that there were three they call them junction boxes uh, we normally call them main holes. There are three main holes that are an interest to their investigations. Uh, the explosion came through those three main holes. And the Department of Labor, they are of the view, and from their preliminary report, uh, that there are certain institutions that they want to interview further. Uh, even though they've given us the reports that they've given us but from the Department of Labor point of view and also because of the similarities that they've observed from the Yeovil Telecom Towers explosion they are of the view that they need to interview those that have already deposited their reports uh, and we've granted them that permission uh, to say go and interview them uh, and, 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 and finalize it. Um, so they, they've accepted that, so they will conclude uh, that aspect as quickly as possible. So this is the first preliminary report that we are having that indicates that the three junction boxes contributed to the explosion. And they've taken us through how the first box uh, uh, exploded the second and the third and they've analyzed the nature of the explosion and uh, they also feel uh, that there is a gas that they still want to experiment so that they can tell us uh, the type of gas uh, that, uh, they, that they are sensing that is responsible and I hope uh, Mr. Lisibe Raphael is still here in case uh, we need to respond to further questions on this one. I didn't go deeper to that technical report. Uh, I felt that let me keep it that way. We can now confirm that the owners of all the cars that were affected there have been tracked, confirmed, and the motor vehicles handed over to them. Uh, this is very, very critical for purpose of claims of insurance and also for purpose of uh, linking those that are injured uh, to the accident scene uh, and also to finalize the necessary paperwork uh, of determining 
many other regulatory requirements that are needed. So I want to thank the police that they've concluded that task because we needed to remove those cars for us to go deeper and get the information. But if we have the information that satisfies us of what caused the explosion, we can also start to repair the roads. Uh, so those cars were, the, were an, an hindrance, but they were also a source of attraction for pedestrians. Uh, so we needed to eliminate and remove uh, that part uh, as quickly as possible. So all the 34 cars that were recorded there, they have now been handed over uh, to their rightful owners. Uh, of the 34, uh, 29 were minibuses and 5 were private vehicles. Uh, we have now concluded that task uh, and that task was done by the police. I've indicated that we have identified uh, the deceased uh, through two sets of fingerprints that were taken from the deceased and one set has been verified against the automatic fingerprint identification system of the police and the other fingerprint was taken through the Department of Home Affairs fingerprint. So the two results, if they confirm that it's the same individual, then we will be in a position to uh, 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 sadly go and visit the family and break uh, this sad news to the family. Uh, so we are waiting for that so that the confirmation from both sides should give us the same outcome. Because the manner in which we found uh, this body that you are talking about, we, we, we felt that we might have to go back to the sea uh, and establish that indeed we are certain uh, that we can account for everyone. So the search and rescue dogs were then deployed uh, to search for possible bodies and to sweep the entire area uh, for exhibits. Uh, and and, and, and uh, thus far, uh, we've not received any additional information that will change the statistics that we have at our disposal. What was the nature of this gas? Uh, uh, because the Department of Labor wants to go back and interview uh, those that they feel that need to give us additional information. When we were ready to come here, the information originally was saying it was natural gas. Uh, but when we received the information from the Department of Labor and the manner in which they were explaining their findings. Uh, we are reluctantly retreating that statement uh, of natural gas so that we give them space uh, to, 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 to attend uh, to the interviews and those that they feel that need to get, they need to get additional information from them. So the angle therefore of our environmental team uh, was automatically suspended because we put the environmental team there uh, to get the nature and the source of the gas, whether it's harmful uh, and whether people that have gone through that place and have inhaled the gas, whether they are safe. Uh, so, so the environmental team and the health team, uh, they are still finalizing that aspect and we, we want to give them space uh, but from uh, criminal reports, uh, we don't think there's any form of danger that has been recorded thus far in terms of uh, uh, that uh, gas. Uh, we have noted, yes, the people that were complaining about headaches, chest pains, and some uh, uh, throat pains, but we, 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 we will suspend that aspect, give the Department of Labor, get the interview, because is the confirmation of the Department of Labor uh, that will then indicate what kind of intervention, medically and otherwise, 
uh, that is needed so that we can conclude on this aspect. So the team from the Department of Labor is led by Mr. Mosetel, uh, and uh, they've gone back on site uh, and they will give us additional information after they've concluded uh, 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 after they've concluded the investigation. So let me confirm this and affirm this because I've seen many stories running. Current, currently as we speak, there is no confirmation regarding the cause of explosion. Currently as we speak, there is no confirmation regarding the cause of explosion. We have criminal reports from the Department of Labor. We've got reports of all institutions that have uh, one form of infrastructure underground. Telecom, I've indicated, Egoli Gas, Sosol, uh, 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 City Power, and all those institutions uh, that have uh, uh, this kind of uh, services. The quality of the buildings, even though the technical experts continue to do their work as directed by the city manager and the law enforcement agencies, we will await because this morning we indicated with people that were doing buildings uh, or geotech, with people that were civil engineers, with structural engineers, uh, with fire. So all of them now, they've managed to pick up whatever they picked up. So there is a consolidated report. Uh, uh, so, so we are still treating that area. Uh, from the risk point of view that it might have a secondary effect. So, which simply means let's treat it until all these reports are finalized. Uh, we must keep it uh, 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 outside uh, or, 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 or close it from being accessed by people that are not authorized to be there.